Welcome to Electron Online. We've been seeing the term characteristic length and we do know that it does depend on the geometry of the object. Now there's no hard size on this. There's no very accurate value for that. There's only approximate values and estimations. So what we're going to do is show you some different shapes and just say that in general we use that for the characteristic length. For example, when we have a vertical plate and we have one hot side and a cold side, notice that this is the temperature on the surface right here, then we take the characteristic length as simply the height of that vertical plate. Even if the plate is inclined to some extent, we still take the length of that plate in that direction as being the characteristic length. But what if we tip the plate over and we have it horizontal? Then you can see here if the hot surface at the top or if the hot surface at the bottom, it doesn't really matter, it's the same thing. The characteristic length is going to be the ratio of the area of the plate divided by the perimeter. So it does depend upon whether or not it's a skinny long plate or if it's a square plate, you'll get different values for different areas depending upon the area to parameter ratio. Then if we have cylinders, either a vertical cylinder or a horizontal cylinder, it depends upon which side of the cylinder is being subject to the airflow. So here you can say that we have a vertical cylinder, we take the length or the height of the cylinder as being the characteristic length. If it's on its side, then we take the, the exposed side or the top of the cylinder, the diameter as being the characteristic length. Sometimes we have a factor where we take 0.9 of the diameter in order to find the characteristic length. For a sphere, here you can see that if air is flowing over the sphere, that the diameter of the sphere is also considered the characteristic length. Again, these are not hard values, not accurate values, but you will also see that the calculations that we use in order to find the heat flow from a surface due to convection, well, we always try to approximate as accurately as possible, but yes, they're just approximations, and these are what we call the typical values that we use for the characteristic length if our geometry is as is seen on the board. And that is how it's done.